Give me around five minutes as I set up something. And then I'll be back. I'll be back five minutes only. So, uh, morning, Daniel. I mean, uh, Peter. Sorry, Peter, Peter, Peter. And welcome to today's uh, class for cellular systems. Uh, I'm, I'm using Zoom because our big blue button platform has, has had an issue since morning. And uh, up to now, I doubt it's been able to be rectified. So, this is the second class for today I'm having on Zoom. So, I usually share the link. So. And be able to view the link and also i believe you have so told your other friends to come and look at uh, to, to join the class now today we are talking about speech processing and speech processing is part of uh, signal processing in, uh, in, uh, in 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 in, uh, in gsm okay so it is basically done in six stages uh, the first one is speech coding so it's a part for signal processing. Mm -hmm. So it's part of signal processing. In a GSM network. GSM network is the kind of network we are running right now, even for LTE, it's still part of GSM. And the first one is uh, speech recognition conversion the second one 
is uh, uh, what we call channel coding. The third one is what we call interleaving. The fourth step is what we call bust formatting. What we call bust formatting. The fifth one is what we call uh, ciphering. We cipher then lastly we modulate so ciphering then modulation so five is ciphering then sixthly is modulation so generally when you're looking at signal processing in a gsm network it involves these six major stages so today we are looking at speech recognition and then I believe for this course, we are actually interested in speech recognition, though speech recognition also involves some aspects of channel encoding and everything. So if I was to explain in short what each of these does. So in speech recognition, actually what you do is uh, you're actually trying to carry speech. So here you're trying to carry speech on a limited available frequency. So you remember one thing with uh, with 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 the uh, mobile communication is that we have limited available frequency spectrum, so it's necessary to efficiently use the available sp spectrum. So the first pre processing is performed on analog speech, where the analog speech is first pre-emphasized. So pre-emphasized means that we are actually turning analog to digital. That's what I mean by pre-emphasizing. Okay, so. The speech coder used is the GSM residual plus excited linear predictive code. So what it basically means here, you're actually coding an analog speech to a digital speech so that it can be carried over the limited uh, spectrum frequency we are having. So that's the first thing which you usually do. And then the second coding is uh, channel coding, which is performed to detect and sometimes correct error introduced in the signal. So that's what we do with channel coding. So, so speech coding, if I was to say about speech coding, it's basically that's the first stage. Here you have to digitize. So in speech coding, so we have to digitize. So pre-processing is first performed where the analog speech is first pre-emphasized or digitized so as to enable carrying over the channel and then channel encoding as you have said channel encoding is trying to look for errors in in, in the encoded message and then uh, then interleaving is whereby uh, we try and fit we try and fit that uh, communication in such a way that it's interleaved. Remember from concurrence when you have interleaved uh, communication is whereby a communication can come on top of another communication, okay? So here you're trying to combine various time slots or frequency slots of the communication so as to enable maximum carrier uh, spectrum of the channel, okay? And then you have bus formatting, uh, where bus formatting is just enhancing the interleaving aspect. And then ciphering is where we add security to the speech by adding cipher key to the original data. And then modulation is the last step of signal processing. The speech is modulated by GMSK speech. Now I have a video here I would like to share. And I'd like to, I think I'll just have to share my screen with that video. And uh, I believe you'll be able to view it and be able to understand speech what it's all about. GSM systems. So it's around 19 minutes. So this lesson there. includes the following topics. So human speech characteristics, digital conversion and peace, GSM speech compression algorithm, speech, speech transmission through, through the GSM network. network, human voice. The, the specific one, voice sound is generated. By so the first one is about the human voice. Uh, it tells about how the human voice is generated. Uh, this is more of a biological kind of an aspect, the human voice, the, the spectrum, 
the vocal track, the vocal chords, everything that you have there. So uh, let me just embed it here so that we can vocal play. vocal chords vibration, open and close. The vibration rate of the vocal chords determines the pitch of the voice. Let's start by understand what happens in our throat when we are speaking. The human voice is generated by pushing air from our lungs through the vocal tract and through mouth has showed in the drawing. Women and young children tend to have high pitch, fast vibration, while adult males tend to have low pitch, slow vibration. Properties of speech. There are two types of speech sounds, voiced and unvoiced. They produce different sounds and spectra due to their differences in sound formation. Properties of speech. With voiced speech, air pressure from the lungs forces normally closed vocal cords to open and vibrate. The vibrational frequencies, which vary from about 50 to 400 hertz, depending on the person's age and sex, and forms resonance in the vocal tract at all harmonics. These resonance peaks are called formants. Properties of speech. Unvoiced sounds, called fricatives like S, F, SH are formed by forcing air through an opening, hence the term, derived from the word friction. Fricatives do not vibrate the vocal cords and therefore do not produce as much periodicity as seen in the formant structure in voiced speech. Unvoiced sounds appear more noise-like. Time domain samples lose periodicity and power spectral density does not display the clear resonant peaks that are found in voiced sounds. The spectrum for speech, combined voiced and unvoiced sounds, has a total bandwidth of approximately 7000 Hz with an average energy at about 3000 Hz. The auditory canal optimizes speech detection by acting as a resonant cavity at this average frequency. Note that the power of speech spectra and the periodic nature of formants drastically diminish above 3500 Hz. Speech encoding algorithms can be less complex than general line coding by concentrating through filters on this region. Furthermore, since telecommunications employ filters that pass frequencies up to only 3000 to 4000 Hertz, high frequencies produced by fricatives are removed. The caller will often have to spell or otherwise distinguish these sounds to be understood, for example the F in Frank. Voice encoding. Pulse code modulation or PSM is a method of converting analog speech into digital signals used not only in telecom networks but also for digital audio in computers, for various compact disc formats and is standard for digital video. Generally, we call analog to digital conversion or AD to process transforming signals from analog into digital form and digital to analog conversion or DA the opposite process. Voice encoding why is AD necessary? But how can we continuous in time and amplitude analog signals converted into discrete in time digital signals? Because information in an analog form cannot be processed by digital computers, so it's necessary to convert them into digital form. Besides, digital data can be transported robustly over long distances unlike the analog data and can be interleaved with other digital data, multiplexing that was learned earlier. So various combinations of transmission channels can be used. This transformation is based on the sampling theorem first formulated in 1928 by Harry Nyquist and was formally proved by Claude e. Shannon in 1949. The sampling theorem. Sampling is the process of converting a continuous analog signal into a numeric sequence that is a function of discrete time. The sampling theorem, the theorem states that for band-limited signals sampled at a rate of at least twice the signal bandwidth, the resulting samples represent no loss of information and can therefore be used to reconstruct the original signal with arbitrarily good fidelity. This is a very important theorem that represents the foundation of the entire modern digital signal processing technology. Our world would be completely different without it. The theorem says that in essence under defined conditions, a continuous in time signal can be fully represented by discrete samples of it. This block diagram. Entire modern digital signal. So if we, if I just pause there, we have told, this uh, video has talked about various aspects, uh, especially a good number of aspects in concerning the voice encoding. Whereby you have the past code modulation, 
where we have to convert analog into speech digital signals. And they have talked about why it's necessary. Okay, so it's necessary to convert it to digital form because a lot of processing, a lot of information that is processed is processed by digital devices. So our voice is in analog. So basically meaning that even when I'm talking here, that the device, the Zoom, the Zoom, the, the Zoom, the, the, the Zoom application must have a PCM modulator in which even, not even the Zoom, even the microphone that I have on my laptop, it must convert my analog into digital signal so that you on your end, you can be able to receive. Now, when you're receiving it, it's in digital. When it reaches to your ear, then it converts back to analog. And you see that this is necessary and this is only achieved through sampling. And this is, I believe in multimedia, we have something we call the Ninquist sampling theorem. And the Ninquist sampling theorem is basically the one which is used for converting analog to digital signals, not only in speech, but also in data. Remember, uh, in networking, data inside the computer is digital. When it's traveling through the, 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 the what? The UTP cables and the S2P cables, it is in analog, in analog. Only, only in fiber, I believe, because it travels in light. But also sometimes in light, it can be in the form of analog. So it means that on the channel where it's carried and the frequency and the medium which is used to carry this data is in analog format. When it is being processed, then it has to be in digital format. That's what we have. And that's why we have talked about the sampling theory. So this is sampling where linguist sampling comes. And this is in discrete format. Now, this one is in continuous. There's no sectoring of the information. But here you see the sectoring. The sectoring, the sectoring there. So it is a key, a key uh, representation aspect, which is really important. Which is really important while uh, in converting in converting analog signals to digital signals. So the theorem here in use is the Nyquist simpling theorem. I want you to take note of the PCM, the pulse codulator modulation, which uh, converts analog to digital speech conversion. Then you have the Nyquist sampling theorem. And this sampling theorem, as I said, is the one which is used to reconstruct, reconstruct a sampled frequency, meaning that there will be no distortion or loss of data. Theorem. Sampling is the process of converting a continuous analog signal into a numeric sequence that is a function of discrete time. The sampling theorem, the theorem states that for band-limited signals sampled at a rate of at least twice the signal bandwidth, the resulting samples represent no loss of information and can therefore be used to reconstruct the original signal with arbitrarily good fidelity. This is a very important theorem that represents the foundation of the entire modern digital signal processing technology. Our world would be completely different without it. The theorem says that in essence, under defined conditions, a continuous in time signal can be fully represented by discrete samples of it. Peace block diagram. After studying a few basic definitions, let's return to the piece and that is our objective. The block diagram of a piece and converter is provided below. The low pass filter. The first step to convert the signal from analog to digital is to filter okay. out the piece, and that is our objective. The, the pass code modulator block diagram. So, this is the one which is used to sample an analog to a digital format. So, in GSM, we use this block diagram, the PCM modulator. It's used in GSM. So, it's actually talking about the blocks of aspects that are used in GSM signal speech processing. And remember I've said that earlier that speech coding is one of the processes in signal processing in GSM. So. Block diagram of a piece and converter is provided below. The low pass filter. The first step to convert the signal from analog to digital is to filter out the higher frequency components by using a low pass filter or LPF. This is an electronic circuit that allows frequency components below the cutoff to pass while higher frequency components are attenuated. The LPF is necessary in order to comply with the first condition of the sampling theorem, namely to have a band-limited signal. In case of human speech, the signal bandwidth can be a few thousand hertz depending on the speaker, but most of its energy is between 200 or 300 hertz and up to 2700 or 2800 hertz. For this reason, the telecom standards define the 300 Hz to 3400 Hz as the standard speech band. 
The low pass filter. There are many ways to implement an LPF. A very simple filter including a resistor and a capacitor is shown in the drawing. The attenuation curve is analytically provided below. Sampling. The second step in converting an analog voice signal to a digital signal is to sample the film. So the first step we're looking at uh, is the low pass filter. And the low pass filter is basically, as the work has been said, is to convert signal from analog to digital to filter out high frequency components by using a low pass filter or LPF. Okay, so even before we start the the, the conversion, we have to we have to remove, we have to filter out the high frequency components by using a low pass filter, and then we come to the second step, which is the sampling, as uh, the guy has, uh, the, I mean the lady has said. So let's go. Sample the filtered input signal at a constant sampling frequency, signal to a digital signal sampling. The second step in converting an analog voice signal to a digital signal is to sample the filtered input signal at a constant sampling frequency. According to sampling theorem, the sampling frequency should be more than double of the highest signal frequency. This is also called the Nyquist frequency. Sampling rate that is higher than the Nyquist frequency is called oversampling. In such case, part of the information generated through the sampling is redundant, so we are loading the transmission channel with useless information. Sampling rate that is lower than the Nyquist frequency is called undersampling. This generates a spectrum distortion called aliasing, resulting in loss of information. The standard sampling frequency selected for piece is 8,000 samples per second. Sampling is performed by an electronic circuit called sample and hold. The result of the sampling is a series of pulses having the amplitude the same as of the original signal, such as signal is shown in the figure. Quantization. Quantization is the process of converting the analog sample's size, height, from continuous to discrete values as showed in the drawing. The difference between two consecutive samples is that the quantization interval, the amplitude value corresponding to one bit. The drawing represents a four bit conversion that is equivalent to a total of 16 levels, 24 equals 16. Let's take sample A. Its amplitude is between levels 11 and 12. Quantization means that its value will be rounded to one of these two, actually the nearest to the real value of the sample, in our case level 11. Quantization. It is clear that taking smaller steps will decrease the quantization interval and our approximation of the sample's value will be more accurate. This will obviously require more bits to express the amplitude of the sample. Therefore, high quality AD and DA units that are also more expensive may have 24, 16.7 million levels or even more bits. As a compromise between quality and cost, 8 bits per sample resolution was defined for piece quantization. We can now calculate the bit rate for one piece of channel by multiplying the sampling rate with the number of bits per sample. The difference between the real value of a sample and the quantized value translates into noise at the DA output called quantization noise. As the distance between quantization steps decreases, the number of bits per sample increases. The noise also decreases as the error is smaller. In our discussion till now, we assumed all quantization intervals as equal. Uniform quantization uses equal quantization levels throughout the entire dynamic range. Ratio between highest and lowest signal amplitudes of an input analog signal. Because quantization noise is not dependent on the signal's amplitude, the ratio between the signal and the quantization noise is also called, as we already know, SN, which is lower for low level signals. Since most voice signals generated are low level, providing better voice quality at higher signal levels is a very inefficient way of digitizing voice signals. To improve voice quality at lower signal levels, uniform quantization, uniform piece, is replaced by a non-uniform quantization process. Companding. The term companding is created by combining of two terms, compressing and expanding, into one word. Companding refers to the process of compressing an analog signal at the source, and then expanding the signal back to its original size when it reaches its destination. As a result of the signal compounding, 
quantization intervals become unequal. The scope of compounding is to correct the lower SN ratio at low signal levels by allocating larger quantization intervals to higher signal amplitudes. How is compounding performed? At the AD side, the input analog signal samples are compressed using a logarithmic amplifier. After sampling, each segment is then quantized using uniform quantization. The compression increases as the sample null amplitude increases. In other words, the larger samples, corresponding to higher amplitudes, are compressed more than the smaller samples. This causes the quantization noise to increase as the sample amplitude, signal amplitude, increases. A logarithmic increase in quantization noise throughout the dynamic range of the input signal keeps the SN constant throughout this dynamic range. At the receiver, expanding of the decoded signal is performed using an amplifier with the inverse characteristics to the input logarithmic amplifier. There are two E to T standards for compounding called Day Law and Mu Law. The Mu Law Compounding Bell Labs developed the M-Law method of logarithmic quantization used in North America and Japan. M-Law, or Mu-Law, tends to have a lower idle noise than E-Law. The compressed maximum signal amplitude is divided into 16 equal segments, 8 positive and 8 negative, the Mu-Law compounding. Each segment includes 16 equal quantization levels indicated on the right-hand side of the drawing. First bit indicates the sign. 1 for positive and 0 for negative of the sample. The next 3 bits are for the number of the segment and the last 4 bits are for the quantization level within the segment. On left hand side there are the amplitude values. We can see impression by observing that in first segment there are 32 amplitude levels, 0 to 31, while in the last one 4096 that means compression of 128 times. The A law compounding. The E2, International Telecommunication Union, modified the method of quantization in G.711 specification to A law, which is used throughout the rest of the world. The division into segments is different here with more emphasis on the low level signals. This is the reason why A law has slightly better signal to noise ratio for low amplitude signals than Mu law. Differences between E law and Mu law. The main advantages and drawbacks of the two compression algorithms are There's no need for that difference. Uh, it plus two blocks implement an A law piece and conversion with linear quantizing. So I was just to just piece back, A law uh, piece and conversion now. with linear quantization without the compounding that requires, as was already learned, 13 bit slash sample. So the GSM speech coding is basically this uh, the part here. The of the resulting stream is 8,000 times 13 equals 104 kilobits per second. The third block implements the GSM compression algorithm called regular pulse excited long term predict. So basically, what it was trying to bring about here was the aspect of uh, GSM speech uh, conversion. And uh, basically, with this kind of uh, signaling, uh, there's another one which I had here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it has that kind of, uh, of 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 a speech. So the transmission, you have speech channel, beta encroach, and then modulation, radio waves, and then demodulation. So it goes up all that way. So speech processing has those steps. Okay, it has those steps which uh, are really important. Even before we come to the GSM signaling uh, uh, mode, mode of operandus, but speech processing us from that uh, from that uh, what do you call from from that talk. It's really important in our day to day lives. So, as uh, let me just share with you. Mm -hmm. I wanted to post. Okay, uh, I uh, as in. Okay, I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, because now we, we with okay we with that okay Peter with that thing which I had sent to you as a message, can't you just copy that uh, message and send it to the WhatsApp group because. Uh, 
because I believe you can copy the message from the, the SMS and then you post it in WhatsApp. I believe that one is way easier because it's a, it's a bit difficult. Okay, for me, I don't have, let me just check. Let's check. I mean, way easier to do that. So, mm -hmm. so I've sent it to your WhatsApp. I've sent it to your WhatsApp. Uh, I've sent it to your WhatsApp. So uh, I don't know. Can I have the link? Let me check for the link. Is the link? Link now. I have to go it on WhatsApp web. <laughs> Check. Do it on WhatsApp web and then I see. Yeah. Okay, now, okay, you can send that link now to the class. But now, where is I saying, your last scene? I don't know, is there database concurrency? But you had a group you guys. Okay, oh, I think people can be able to now to join using that. that. So as you can see, there's an issue with the big blue button and that's why I decided to come this way. So uh, I, was, uh, I was looking at that uh, group. So participants only one me. Okay, so I've sent it there. Okay, I've sent it there, it there to the WhatsApp group. Third participants to look well. Okay. So let me just pause it there. I see if people will join. So there was a video which I was uh, playing, and I believe uh, with this aspect of speech coding and uh, everything, I believe this video is the best one which uh, you can be able to explain the various aspects of uh, speech and coding the way it is uh, it, it, it is has, uh, as, as has evolved. So like you, it's around 19 minutes long. So kindly as this thing is uh, playing, okay, you'll be writing uh, down some few aspects in there. And then I've also shared the link. You can be able to look at that link uh, because it's all about GSM coding. Human speech characteristics, digital conversion and peace. GSM speech compression algorithm. Speech transmission through the GSM network, human voice. The specific voice sound is generated by vocal cords vibration, open and close. The vibration rate of the vocal cords determines the pitch of the voice. Let's start by understand what happens in our throat when we are speaking. The human voice is generated by pushing air from our lungs through. 
the vocal tract and through mouth has showed in the drawing. Women and young children tend to have high pitch, fast vibration, while adult males tend to have low pitch, slow vibration. Properties of speech. There are two types of speech sounds, voiced and unvoiced. They produce different sounds and spectra due to their differences in sound formation. Properties of speech. With voiced speech, air pressure from the lungs forces normally closed vocal cords to open and vibrate. The vibrational frequencies, pitch, vary from about 50 to 400 hertz, depending on the person's age and sex, and forms resonance in the vocal tract at odd harmonics. These resonance peaks are called formants. Properties of speech. Unvoiced sounds, called fricatives like S, F, SH are formed by forcing air through an opening, hence the term, derived from the word friction. Fricatives do not vibrate the vocal cords and therefore do not produce as much periodicity as seen in the formant structure in voiced speech. Unvoiced sounds appear more noise-like. Time domain samples lose periodicity and the power spectral density does not display the clear resonant peaks that are found in voiced sounds. The spectrum for speech, combined voiced and unvoiced sounds, has a total bandwidth of approximately 7000 Hz with an average energy at about 3000 Hz. The auditory canal optimizes speech detection by acting as a resonant cavity at this average frequency. Note that the power of speech spectra and the periodic nature of formants drastically diminish above 3500 Hz. Speech encoding algorithms can be less complex than general line coding by concentrating through filters on this region. Furthermore, since telecommunications employ filters that pass frequencies up to only 2000 to 4000 Hz, high frequencies produced by fricatives are removed. The caller will often have to spend an otherwise distinguished sound to be understood. Uh, just just a minute. Uh, I hope you can be able to. You can be able to view my screen because that's what I wanted to know. If you can be able to view my screen. Okay. Screen share with that screen share. Okay. Okay. Example the F in Frank. Voice encoding. Pulse code modulation or PSM is a method of converting analog speech into digital signals used not only in telecom networks but also for digital audio in computers, for various compact disc formats and is standard for digital video. Generally, we call analog to digital conversion or AD the process of transforming signals from analog into digital form and digital to analog conversion or DA the opposite process. Voice encoding, why is AD necessary? But how can we continuous in time and amplitude analog signals converted into discrete in time digital signals? Because information in an analog form cannot be processed by digital computers, so it's necessary to convert them into digital form. Besides, digital data can be transported robustly over long distances unlike the analog data and can be interleaved with other digital data, multiplexing that was learned earlier. So various combinations of transmission channels can be used. This transformation is based on the sampling theorem first formulated in 1928 by Harry Nyquist and was formally proved by Claude e. Shannon in 1949. The sampling theorem. Sampling is the process of converting a continuous analog signal into a numeric sequence that is a function of discrete time. The sampling theorem, the theorem states that for band-limited signals sampled at a rate of at least twice the signal bandwidth, the resulting samples represent no loss of information and can therefore be used to reconstruct the original signal with arbitrarily good fidelity. 
This is a very important theory that represents the foundation of the entire modern digital signal processing technology. Our world would be completely different without it. The theorem says that in essence, under defined conditions, a continuous in time signal can be fully represented by discrete samples of it. Piece block diagram. After studying a few basic definitions, let's return to the piece and that is our objective. The block diagram of a piece and converter is provided below. The low pass filter. The first step to convert the signal from analog to digital is to filter out the higher frequency components by using a low pass filter or LPF. This is an electronic circuit that allows frequency components below the cutoff to pass while higher frequency components are attenuated. The LPF is necessary in order to comply with the first condition of the sampling theorem, namely to have a band limited signal. In case of human speech, the signal bandwidth can be a few thousand hertz depending on the speaker but most of its energy is between 200 or 300 hertz and up to 2700 or 2800 hertz. For this reason the telecom standards define the 300 hertz to 3400 hertz as the standard speech band. The low pass filter. There are many ways to implement an LPF. A very simple filter including a resistor and a capacitor is shown in the drawing. The attenuation curve is analytically provided to look. Yes, Peter, I've seen you raised up your, your hand. Uh, Peter. Mm-hmm. Peter. You raised up your hand. Is there an issue? Uh okay, 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 okay. So uh, what this video is all about, it's all about the methods of uh, conversion, speech conversion, which is a really important process. We have talked about, they've said about the low pass filter, start with the low pass filter, and then you go ahead with the conversion as is uh, as, as it's uh, again denoted. Peter, Peter. Let's see. Oh, come. So, sampling. The second step in converting an analog voice signal to a digital signal is to sample the filtered input signal at a constant sampling frequency. According to sampling theorem, the sampling frequency should be more than double of the highest signal frequency. This is also called the Nyquist frequency. Sampling rate that is higher than the Nyquist frequency is called oversampling. In such case, part of the information generated through the sampling is redundant, so we are loading the transmission channel with useless information. Sampling rate that is lower than the Nyquist frequency is called undersampling. This generates a spectrum distortion called aliasing, resulting in loss of information. The standard sampling frequency selected for piece is 8,000 samples per second. Sampling is performed by an electronic circuit called sample and hold. The result of the sampling is a series of pulses having the amplitude the same as of the original signal, such as signal is shown in the figure. Quantization. Quantization is the process of converting the analog sample's size, height, from continuous to discrete values as showed in the drawing. The difference between two consecutive samples is that the quantization interval, the amplitude value corresponding to one bit. The drawing represents a four bit conversion that is equivalent to a total of 16 levels, 24 equals 16. Let's take sample A. Its amplitude is between levels 11 and 12. Quantization means that its value will be rounded to one of these two, actually the nearest to the real value of the sample, in our case level 11. Quantization. It is clear that taking smaller steps will decrease the quantization interval and our approximation of the sample's value will be more accurate. This will obviously require more bits to express the amplitude of the sample. Therefore, high quality AD and DA units that are also more expensive may have 24, 16.7 million levels, or even more bits. 
as a compromise between quality and cost. 8 bits per sample resolution was defined for piece quantization. We can now calculate the bit rate for one piece of channel by multiplying the sampling rate with the number of bits per sample. The difference between the real value of a sample and the quantized value translates into noise at the DA output called quantization noise. As the distance between quantization steps decreases, the number of bits per sample increases. The noise also decreases as the error is smaller. In our discussion till now, we assumed all quantization intervals as equal. Uniform quantization uses equal quantization levels throughout the entire dynamic range. Ratio between highest and lowest signal amplitudes of an input analog signal. Because quantization noise is not dependent on the signal's amplitude, the ratio between the signal and the quantization noise is also called, as we already know, SN, which is lower for low-level signals. Since most voice signals generated are low level, providing better voice quality at higher signal levels is a very inefficient way of digitizing voice signals. To improve voice quality at lower signal levels, uniform quantization, uniform P, is replaced by a non-uniform quantization process. Companding. The term companding is created by combining of two terms, compressing and expanding, into one word. Companding refers to the process of compressing an analog signal at the source and then expanding the signal back to its original size when it reaches its destination. As a result of the signal companding, quantization intervals become unequal. The scope of companding is to correct the lower SN ratio at low signal levels by allocating larger quantization intervals to higher signal amplitudes. How is companding performed? At the AD side, the input analog signal samples are compressed using a logarithmic amplifier. After sampling, each segment is then quantized using uniform quantization. The compression increases as the sample signal amplitude increases. In other words, the larger samples, corresponding to higher amplitudes, are compressed more than the smaller samples. This causes the quantization noise to increase as the sample amplitude, signal amplitude, increases. A logarithmic increase in quantization noise throughout the dynamic range of the input signal keeps the SN constant throughout this dynamic range. At the receiver, expanding of the decoded signal is performed using an amplifier with the inverse characteristics to the input logarithmic amplifier. There are two E to T standards for companding called A law and mu law. The mu law companding. Bell Labs developed the M-Law method of logarithmic quantization used in North America and Japan. M-Law, or Mu-Law, tends to have a lower idle noise than A-Law. The compressed maximum signal amplitude is divided into 16 equal segments, 8 positive and 8 negative, the Mu-Law companding. Each segment includes 16 equal quantization levels indicated on the right-hand side of the drawing. First bit indicates the sign. 1 for positive and 0 for negative of the sample. The next 3 bits are for the number of the segment and the last 4 bits are for the quantization level within the segment. On left hand side there are the amplitude values. We can see the compression by observing that in first segment there are 32 amplitude levels, 0 to 31, while in the last one 4096 that means compression of 128 times. The A law companding. The E2, International Telecommunication Union, modified the method of quantization in G.711 specification to A law, which is used throughout the rest of the world. The division into segments is different here, with more emphasis on the low level signals. This is the reason why A law has slightly better signal to noise ratio for low amplitude signals than Mu law. Differences between A law and Mu law. The advantages and drawbacks of the two compression algorithms are A law provides a greater dynamic range than mu law. Dynamic range is the ratio in decibels between strongest and weakest signals. Mu law provides better signal to distortion performance for low level signals than A law, leading to higher signal fidelity at low levels. A law requires 13 bits for a uniform piece equivalent, while mu law requires 14 bits for the same uniform piece equivalent. 
Uniform piecemeal equivalent is the number of bits necessary to represent the compressed signal using uniform sampling intervals. An international connection will always use the A-law. For example, a transatlantic link connecting a Mu-law country, US or Canada, with an A-law country. Any country in Europe, by definition, will use the A-law. The Mu-law to A-law conversion is the responsibility of the Mu-law country. The North American country. Peace and waveform generation. This last block of the peace and block diagram performs the conversion of the 8-bit digital signal into the peace and waveform. An example presenting a shorter, 4 bits per sample, piece is showed here. GSM speech coding. The block diagram below presents the main parts of the speech coding process in the MIS. The first two blocks implement an A law piece and conversion with linear quantization without the compounding that requires, as was already learned, 13 bit slash sample. The bit rate of the resulting stream is 8000 times 13 equals 104 kilobits per second. The third block implements the GSM compression algorithm called regular pulse excited long term prediction RPELTP that reduces the digital speech rate to 13 kilobits per second. GSM speech coding. In the opposite direction, piece encoded speech at 64 kilobits per second is received from MSC. First, the 8-bit A-law signal is converted into 13-bit uniform quantized signal having the already known 104 kilobits per second rate. In continuation, the same RPE slash LTP speech compression block as in the MS side reduces the bit rate to 13 kilobits per second. All this happens inside the draw that, as we know, is part of the BSC, GSM speech coding. The regular pulse excited, long-term prediction, RPE LTP, speech encoder of the GSM is the result of intense development work. The LPC stands for linear prediction coefficients representing a set of parameters that are obtained from the human vocal tract system. The GSM group studied several speech coding algorithms on the basis of subjective speech quality and complexity, which is related to cost, processing delay, and power consumption once implemented for arriving at the choice of a regular pulse excited linear predictive coder, RP underscore LPC, with a long-term predictor loop. Speech is divided into 20 millisecond samples, including 104 times 20 equals 2080 bits, each of which is encoded as 260 bits, giving a total output bit rate of 260, 20 equals 13 kilobits per second. The 260 output bits are divided into 36 LPC bits, 36 LTP bits, 188 RP bits, GSM speech coding. The speech signal transmitted over the GSM radio interface must be protected from errors. GSM uses convolutional encoding and block enabling to achieve this protection. We know that the speech encoder produces a block of 260 bits per 20 ms. From subjective testing, it was found that some bits of this block were more important for perceived speech quality than others. Class 1A 50 bits, most sensitive to bit errors. Class 1B 132 bits, moderately sensitive to bit errors. Class 2 78 bits, least sensitive to bit errors. GSM channel coding. Class 1A bits have a 3 bit cyclic redundancy code, CRC, added for error detection, creating together a block of 53 bits. If an error is detected, the frame is judged too damaged to be comprehensible and it is discarded. It is replaced by a slightly attenuated version of the previous correctly received frame. The 132 class 1B bits together with the above 53 bits and a 4-bit tail sequence, a total of 189 bits, are input into a half-rate convolutional encoder of constraint length 4. Each input bit is encoded as two output bits, based on a combination of the previous four input bits. The convolutional encoder thus outputs 2 times 189 equals 378 bits. The 78 unprotected class 2 bits are added to the above 378 bits for a total of 456 bits over 20 ms, providing an output bit rate of 
456.20 equals 22.8 kilobits per second, the full rate voice channel of the GSM. Interleaving. In order to protect the speech signal against burst errors, strings of errors, generated by radio signal feeding, the slow fluctuation in received signal level, each sequence is interleaved. The scope is to divide the error burst between two blocks of bits, so that each one will be slightly affected instead of one severely affected. Note the position of the data from the two channels. The same data structure applies for all eight 114 bit time slot bursts, interleaving. Below, a different way of presenting the eight consecutive bursts of same channel is presented. Each burst includes two groups of 57 data bits each, originating from two different 20 ms speech blocks, the blue one and the red one. Summary of coding and interleaving. So, uh, that was the video uh, which I wanted us to share. So, it has talked about various aspects. It has talked about uh, the PCM, the Ninquist, compounding whereby you you combine uh, compression and uh, and there was another aspect which they they say they were combining but in all aspect of this there's a there's a discussion forum there's a discussion forum which i have uh, which i have uh, which i've added to the group after today's lesson so that uh, you could be able to You could be able to look, 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 look uh, you could be able to what? To look at that video, I've also shared. I've also shared the, I've also shared the what? I've also shared the, the, the I will also share the, the class video so that you guys could be able to look at it and also be able to understand. Not even understand, but be able to relook re at uh, this aspect of speech conversion so that you could be able to understand why it is really important. And we say that speech conversion is important so as to enable the transfer of information, which in a limited spectrum on a cellular network. And in this case, we are looking at the GSM network and there are various aspects which we have uh, discussed there. So I will share this video online, uh, but I've also shared the link. There's a link. This is the link. If you could just look at this link, uh, let me share it again. You could just be able to copy it and uh, be able to be able to look at it when you're be able to look at it. Yeah, that, that that's the link uh, which I shared. Let me just share it again. That's the link. Uh, you can be able to look at that video at your own time so that you could be able to comprehend what that video is all about. It talks about various things, but I'd like you to look at the PCM, the Dinkwist, the compounding and the interleaving. And uh, there's another one. Uh, yeah, and interleaving. Because those are the key aspects when it comes to speech conversion that are really, really important. Unless there's a question, Shalom. I have seen the others. I don't know where the others have gone. One second they are here, the next second we talk our man. So there's a discussion forum which I've posted there. So I'd like you to look into it so that uh, next week we shall come and look at the GSM signal protocol. GSM signaling. Signaling protocol. And then the other week we come and look at uh, what we call uh, power control in GSM. So unless there's a question, Shalom, because you're the only one who's left here. I don't know where the others have gone off to. There's no question. Okay, so I what I want you is look at this slide player. Look at that link. I hope you have copied that link. You can just click it there and it will open up on the on your web browser. So you click on it and listen to what that video is talking about speech conversion because everything about speech conversion is technically covered in that video which I've shared so that you'll be able to know what speech conversion is all about. But also the other materials which I have a letter share on 
So kindly tell the class to look at that, uh, what do you call, uh, that forum which I've posted in class so that they'll be able to do it. So I think the class for today has ended there. Yeah. Any question, Shalom? No question. Okay, so, so I'm going to leave your forum and you look at that video as you answer those questions. And those questions are not straightforward. You'll need, like, for the Ninquist sampling theorem, I'll need you guys to go and do a bit of more research on what that Ninquist, I believe you've done multimedia, and multimedia is purely based on Ninquist sampling theorem. So I'd like you to go and read on what Ninquist is and how it has been able to and now it is actually the basis for streaming. Actually, it's the basis for streaming. Streaming uh, and uh, transfer of video and uh, audio over limited frequencies. All of them are based on the Linguist sampling theorem. So sampling is really important because sampling, you're trying to break a large message chunk into smaller message chunks, which could be easily transferred over a limited frequency spectrum. So I'd like to look at into those things. So if there's no question, I'd like to stop there. And I'll share this video. So I'll share it on YouTube. Uh, okay. Ah, thank you. Thank you.